Greetings peeps, here we are back at the van. I just took the doghouse off. And the next thing I'm gonna do is take the air filter off. Then I'm gonna clean out all the poop and pee, kind of clean this off just a little bit. And then I'm gonna start using the plastic split tube over these wires and other wires that could possibly be chewed on by mice. Now I just gave you a little time lapse to show you exactly why I can't use sprays like Camper Van Kevin spray or peppermint or soap chips. Although I think soap chips would probably last a long time. I may still do that. It takes 15 to 20 minutes just to get to my engine. And I can't do that every week. I'm not gonna take everything out every week just to spray some stuff on my engine, put everything back together. I'm just not gonna happen. Um, people, forget that I have a dog house. I don't have a regular truck, like a pickup truck. You can just open the hood and there's your engine. It just takes a lot more effort to get to. So my idea is just gonna be use this split tubing, put it over the wires, and it's big enough that it makes it more difficult for the mice to chew through. Now I know that this isn't a solution that's gonna completely stop rodents from chewing up my wires, but putting this big honking piece of plastic around my wires certainly will slow them down. And I, Good chance I might hear it or it would they'd chew through this and, and then go chew something else. This is just a preventative measure. I know people were, there's people who were writing in all caps that I should use steel wool and spray things and chips and mothballs and load my engine up with all this stuff. And, and I got several people that told me I need to like steam clean my engine. Hey, if you want to come steam, steam clean my engine for me, I will meet you somewhere. We can... Uh, you can have at it. You can steam clean my engine if it bothers you that much. I'm here to actually get some work done. So that's what I'm doing today. So let's get the air filter off. I want to check it. I think I might actually clean the air filter. It's been about six months. Every six months or so, I take my k &N out and I clean it and dry it and put it back in. It was kind of cruddy from Sedona. So I think I might clean it today. And this is the Chrysler spray that I got. It's actually called Mopar Combustion Chamber Cleaner. And I need to read the instructions again, but it's not like a pretty involved process to use it. I have to spray this whole can into my intake. So I'm gonna take a minute and read this and see if it's gonna be something I can do today. If not, I'll save it for another time. I don't really have a huge carbon buildup issue right now because I've used enough cleaners and done enough stuff to get most of the carbon out, but I still do. Every once in a while when I'm running low octane fuel, I'll get a knock. And I think if I use this, it would, it would finally get rid of it. So let's get to work. So I got the air cleaner out, the air filter out. I cleaned this up a little bit just because it was gross. It was covered in mouse poo and pee and I got some Clorox and I disinfected it. I got my k and filter cleaner out. The filter was looking pretty gross. So I decided to go ahead and clean that. I'll show you the steps real quick. So step one is just to use the spray. And you spray inside and out. It's like an ammonia spray. It almost smells like Windex. Spray it in and out and that detaches all the grease and grime from the filter element, which I've already done. Then you just rinse it out with a hose with some high pressure, gets all the gunk out. It was, it was pretty dirty. So this is it clean. The next step is to use the air filter oil and spray oil on this thing. And that captures all the small particles that go through. Because this is a performance filter and it does increase the oil response, gives you maybe one or two more horsepower but I got it because it's better for your throttle response and I can take it out and clean it myself. I don't have to replace it every few months. I just clean it twice a year and it does me right. So as soon as it's completely dry, it's gonna take another 10, 15 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and oil it and then that'll be it for the air filter system. Next step here is going to be the shot vac, the engine. Try to get all that mouse poo, which is now dried and sterile with the shot vac. I'm just gonna turn this on, suck all the stuff out. I'll split, spray some uh, bleach cleaner around, not too much because I don't want to get wet. 
Then we'll go ahead and proceed to cover all these little wires. Yes, I know a million of you are already. Hantavirus, oh, Hantavirus, you're gonna die. Uh, this stuff has been baked on my engine. I've driven at least two hours with the, the poop on there. And it's absolutely gonna be sterile at this point. You can probably pick it up and eat it and be fine. And no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this out and then bleach everything. Uh, Heidi said this is fine to do it with her her shot vac. She's already cleaned out one of her other things and had stuff in it. So we're gonna go ahead and just throw this filter out and everything when she's done. So we're all good, don't worry. It's not gonna be a bad thing. Wear my gloves and make sure everything, clean everything up, wash everything good when I'm done, so. Who has been vacuumed out of this side? Just gonna go ahead and this is Clorox with bleach. It's absolutely going to take care of anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the valve covers off, and stuff like that. And just let me get this too because I heard them actually walking on this. That's how I originally knew they were in here because I heard I heard them hitting this. So I'm absolutely absolutely gonna bleach that down. Probably bleach it all down. <laughs> This little bit of liquid isn't going to hurt the engine. So I'll just go ahead and wipe down what I can. I'm going to throw the rags away, of course. Uh, and then it's going to be time to back in the other side and get the split loop on there. All right, I use 10 feet of the split covering was just enough to get all of the little wires. I knew every single thing in the engine, but anything that was exposed wire that I thought might be chewed on by a mouse, I covered. Now I'm impressed because this stuff looks really cool. Check this out. That engine looks like something from Mad Max with all the covering on the cables now. Check that out, it looks really cool. So everything, all the sensors, all the fuel injection wiring, there's some grounding wiring, everything here. I didn't get the air conditioning wiring because that's really not vital. They do chew through that, it's not gonna kill the engine. This is all about covering all the stuff that they could possibly chew that would cause a check engine light. You guys saw how hard it is for me to get to this engine. I'm not spraying anything. I'm not putting down anything down here I have to do every week to keep them away. I figure covering the wires is probably the best preventative measure I can do because They'll start chewing and they'll stop. They should stop before they get to the wires. If they're nesting here, they're just gonna chew whatever's there. It's not like they're trying to chew through stuff, but I'm thinking they'll chew this plastic, this pretty thick plastic covering and maybe that will satisfy them and they won't make it to the wires. And if they do chew through it, it'll make it obvious. Like I can open, take the cover off and I can say, well, you know, another problem with the motor and I can look and I can see quickly which wires they may have chewed through. Because I do have everything covered, except for the, you know, the, the big harnesses now, you know, they're, they're more than half inch. I used half inch to cover the wires. I figured that was a good medium size that would cover anything that I needed that would fit under the motor. It all looks good, everything's clean. I took all the rat poo and pee, I bleached everything. I just started the motor, no check engine light, everything's running good. Here we are back at Reese's Auto. Got the popo next to me. They're working on the popo. So I'm just waiting for the guy to get my van and take a look at the air conditioning. So even though I have an appointment, you know how it is, you still gotta wait. All right, guys, here we go. We're at Reese's and Sons. It only took them about a half hour. They said there was a bad gasket in the line, so they replaced the gasket, filled me back up, and guess what? My AC is blowing nice and cold. So it's time to hit the road and go get some other work done. Another happy ending. Let's, let's at least hope it's another happy ending. We'll find out in a few days if it keeps leaking or not. So that's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. So now that you guys see why I can't use sprays or mothballs or anything else because the doghouse makes it very inaccessible to get to the motor, I have another solution that's going to be even better. And it involves using the Jackery.
we're gonna call this a Pobo Tech Tip. So I have the Jackery here, the Jackery 240 Explorer, which you can find a link to buy one of these below in the description. And I have these five watt each LED lights, which Stan gave me as part of his Harbor Freight solar panel kit. I just made myself an adapter cable, plugged it into the Jackery 12 volt, and there we go. These are five watts each, they're very bright. They certainly do the job. So what I do is I just stick one way up in there so that it shines on the valve covers. What I do is I shove one, one of these lights way up in here that shines on top of the valve cover gasket. Then on the other side, I do the same thing. Stick it on top of the alternator. So you can see it shines back there on top of the engine. I can actually see some of the plastic tubing that I placed in there. So I have a light on each side of the motor powered by the Jackery. And I noticed that as long as it's at least nine watts, it'll bounce between nine and 10 watts during the day, that it will stay on all night long. For those of you that don't know, the Jackery, if it's, if it's less than 10 watts on any of the power systems, it will automatically shut off after three hours. And that's just um, to conserve the battery. They're assuming that you're not using it so it shuts itself off. And what you can do as a special bonus is plug the solar panel in here and leave the solar panel and the Jackery outside and it will charge the lights in the daytime while they run at night. Now what I do is I put the Jackery on the dashboard. I run the solar panel wire out through my door and I run the power cord out through my door. So here we go, and just plugging it in. Bada boom. While you're inside your vehicle, you can hit the power button and that kicks on the lights under the hood. Just do that at night when it gets dark. They'll stay on all night. And then if you have the solar panel, you can plug the solar panel in here, leave the solar panel outside, stick it to the side of your vehicle or whatever, and that'll charge a Jackery back up to 100%. So it's, it basically will keep it going day and night for you. Hey, thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe, share, and like. And we'll see you guys next time. Say hi, Odin. Randall Furnine, Army Golf Guy, Joe Lazaro, Pat.